Hello. Today I would like to talk about noise generated by a supersonic jet using computational air acoustics. Computational air acoustics extract all acoustic information directly from the CFD solution. Acoustic pressure fluctuations are directly monitored at different locations in the domain and a transient compressible CFD solution will resolve the acoustic field and sound generation and propagation will be contained in the CFD solution. Therefore, no further acoustic models are needed. This is the problem description for this tutorial. We would like to model the screech phenomenon, which is a loud and high-pitched sound that occurs in imperfectly expanded jets that can damage the structural integrity of the aircraft. We have a 2D flow of a turbulent air flowing through a nozzle with a Mach number of 1.2, and the diameter of the nozzle is 1 inch. OK, let's start Fluent. I will start Fluent in two dimension with double precision. Now I can read the mesh that I prepared before. You can see that the mesh has quadrilateral elements downstream of the nozzle. It is prepared in axisymmetric format, and it has triangular elements reaching the outskirt of the model and also these large elements will ensure that the numerical diffusion will prevent reflection of the pressure wave from the outlet boundaries. Okay, now we can move on to set up the problem. It's an axisymmetric problem, and I'm going to move on to material properties of air. I'm going to use ideal gas for density and Sutherland law for viscosity of air. Hit change and create. Now let's move on to the turbulence model. I'm going to use K-epsilon model realizable with enhanced wall treatment and compressibility effects. And since we have better constants for K-epsilon model of a jet, I'm going to modify the K-epsilon constants as follow. Okay, after setting up the K-epsilon constant, we can move on to cell zone conditions. Under cell zone conditions, we have two zones. The second zone is a small patch of fluid right downstream of the nozzle exit that we are going to model in laminar format in order to augment the excitation of the flow. Hit OK and we are going to move on to boundary conditions. Under boundary conditions, we are going to set up the inlet flow to ensure that the Mach number of 1.2 is achieved at the inlet of the nozzle. Also, I'm going to change the turbulence specification method to intensity and hydraulic diameter. I'm going to specify turbulent intensity of 0.1 and the hydraulic diameter is the diameter of the nozzle, which is 0.0254 meter. Hit OK and we are going to move on to the outlet flow. The outlet pressure, I'm going to specify 100,000 Pascal. And for turbulent intensity and viscosity ratio, I'm going to use value of 1 and 2. Hit OK and we're going to move on to wall conditions. Since we are not interested in the flow pattern in the vicinity of the walls, I'm going to use a specified shear of 0 Pascal and also a thermal condition of heat flux with 0 value to describe the wall. I'm going to copy the same condition on all other walls that we have in the domain. Okay, now we can move on to solution methods. Under solution methods, I'm going to change the pressure velocity scheme to coupled for spatial discretization of the gradients. I'm going to use Greengauss node based and for density momentum, turbulent kinetic energy, turbulent dissipation rate and energy equation, I'm going to use the quick method. Now we can move on to solution controls. For flow current number, I'm going to use the value of 25. I'm going to reduce the under relaxation factors of momentum and pressure to 0.3 to stabilize the solution. OK, now we can move on to initialization methods. Under initialization method, I'm going to use compute from all zones. I'm going to use a value of 100,000 Pascal for gauge pressure, 0.1 for kinetic energy, 6 for dissipation rate, and 300 Kelvin for the temperature. Now we can initialize the model and I'm going to move on to set up physics and I'm going to go to operating conditions and I'm going to change the operating pressure to value of zero. Hit OK to have a better initial condition. I'm going to use the FMG method to initialize the domain. I'm going to use value of 0.15 for FMG current number and I'm going to initialize the domain using the FMG method. 
On the results section, we can go to contours and plot the Mach number in our domain to see what would be the result of the FMG initialization. Now by knowing that, we can go to run calculation and solve this problem. I'm going to specify 250 for number of iterations. I'm going to calculate this solution. Now that the solution is converged, I'm going to go back to contours and I'm going to take a look at the Mach number again. You can see that we captured three shock cells right downstream of the nozzle. Okay, it's time to run this model in transient form to see what would be the result of a transient simulation of the same flow field. You can go back to the setup section. I'm going to change the time scheme to transient. I'm going to go back to solution methods. I'm going to make sure that the transient formulation is second order implicit. And under run calculations, I'm going to specify the time step of 5e minus 6 and number of time steps of 2000. Now before proceeding any further, I'm going to define a custom field function as follow. I'm going to name it acoustic pressure fluctuations. Hit define and close. Now we can report the values of the pressure fluctuations that we define in user-defined custom field functions at the location of microphone 1 and 2 as follow. I'm going to give it the name of microphone pressure, hit OK, and we can solve this simulation. After solution converge, we can take a look at the pressure fluctuations at the location of the microphones for the very first 0.01 second. Now I'm going to run the simulation for another 2000 time steps and we can load the data in CFD post and post process the data. By plotting the acoustic pressure fluctuation that was obtained during our simulation, you can see how the pressure is fluctuating in the domain downstream and also upstream of the nozzle. Now we can move on and post process the signal that was obtained at the location of microphone 1 and microphone 2. Plotting the data shows the acoustic pressure fluctuation at the location of microphone 1 and 2. And by using fast Fourier transformation, we can further analyze the signal. By using the fast Fourier transformation, we can obtain the power spectral density as a function of frequency for the noise generated by the jet at the location of microphone 1 and 2 that is showing a tonal noise at about 6600 Hz, which is consistent with different experimental data. Okay, that concludes our tutorial. Thanks for tuning in.